Good evening from central London. This is podcast number 90 coming at you. Hope all is good. Hope you're enjoying this bizarre, rare, glorious London sunshine. I don't know if it's going to last, but today's day game was unbelievable. I was out weaving my way around Soho and Seven Dials and Covent Garden. Boy, oh boy, was it good. It was nice to finally do some solo day game on my own for myself. Not just when I'm coaching, not just uh, with a wing, but just proper old school doing it myself and enjoying that kind of animalistic side to solo day game. That's a topic for another podcast, I guess. Um, how to do solo day game, the advantages and disadvantages of it, but I would really, really recommend it. Anyway, today's topic is something close to my heart. I talk about this in my first book, Day Game. The link is below. And that book is not just my backstory and the lay reports and the outer game techniques. But in that book, I make many parallels between day game as a hustle and other forms of street hustling, from street magic to underground street art, even to things like pickpocketing, to charity signups, to sales and marketing, etc., etc. Now, when you say the word hustle, or I like to call day game street hustle, even though it's obviously done in supermarkets and coffee shops and malls. When you say the word hustle to people, it sounds very dark and manipulative. Yeah, it sounds uh, wrong on some level. It sounds forced. It sounds totally fake. And there are classic hustle films, if you like heist hustle films like me. You might be aware of that one with Paul Newman. It's in the 60s, I think it was released, called The Hustler, about a pool shark. And even though it's really cool that he's winning all this money from hustling pool, you'll see how he descends into a kind of darkness, the darker side of the hustle. So that's a good film to kick off with. Uh, you might have seen The Sting, similarly with Robert Redford. That was in the 70s, I think. That's a good film. You're probably aware of hustle films like Ocean's Eleven or Reservoir Dogs. One of my favourites is Catch Me If You Can. Uh, there's a new one, actually. Yeah, this is it's a bit of a shit film. It's a Will Smith film. It's just come out called Focus. It came out a few months ago, but I've just seen it. Yet there is a lot of game going on. The person who obviously wrote that script or helped to write that script knew game terminology, game techniques, hustle techniques. So it's good for the hustle. There's other films like the true account of the MIT blackjack heist in Vegas. That's called 21. I think the book's called Bringing Down the House, but the film's called 21. The book is better than the film, but that's a good heist story, a true story. And um, what was the one last year or the year before? Oh, yeah, American Hustle, that movie about hustlers throughout the United States. But anyway, I've always been fascinated by this kind of thing, by people pulling things off against all odds. Um it it really started as a kid, I guess, when I was fascinated by magicians, close-up magicians, street magicians. I wasn't really into the big stage illusions. I loved magic being outside or magic happening really fast, coming and going. I loved the fact that the magician's not um, in any way deceiving the audience in an evil way because the audience are willingly suspending their disbelief. So the participants in a magic show, they want to be tricked. They want to see the magician's sleight of hand. They want to see um, this thing in front of their eyes because it's enjoyable. And we'll come on to why that's quite similar to game. Um, I was always fascinated by the theatre, not for watching the show, but I was fascinated by the behind the scenes. For example, when I was in secondary school, rather than being in the productions... Uh, like my friends wanted to be, I was always volunteering to be like the stage hand or working the lights, working the curtains, getting right up there and doing the smoke machine, whatever. I was fascinated by the art of the illusion. I mean, what a beautiful craft it was. And that links to the magic. And obviously that links to my opinion of day game. Uh, first of all, we've got to think, why is day game a hustle then? What are we hustling in day game? Well, obviously we're hustling girls who are younger and hotter than us so it's an smv hustle really if you think about it she's trying to hustle her smv you're trying to hustle your sexual market value 
she's trying to get a guy who's either got very strong alpha DNA or he's got uh, a nice fat bank balance so she can hustle uh, her survival and her children's survival and their protection. A guy is trying to hustle for a younger, hotter girl to mate with so his DNA can combine with hers and his children will also have a higher chance of being hot and passing on their genes, etc., etc. That's just simply survival of the fittest. That's evolutionary biology in action. So you've heard me talk many times about the sexual marketplace and how you're hustling your sexual market value. Now, there's nothing unethical about that. Where it gets, you could say, um, slightly strange is that with day game, if you're just being a player and you're going out there just to fuck girls and then uh, pump and dump them, then that's a hustle in the sense that you're perhaps pretending that you're going to stick around and then you vanish. Uh, there's many pickups. All seducers have these pickups where she perhaps starts to think that you're more than just sex, but then you vanish or you just drop it or you move on to the next girl or you cheat on her or it's an open relationship. So ultimately you've hustled uh, her SMV and she loses out. Things break up. So she walks away uh, with chips down. Yeah. There's a different form of hustle, though, if you think about day game in the fact that you're hustling society guys think they have to meet girls in clubs and pay for drinks and buy tables guys think you need cars and watches and suits and good jobs and big cars like i've said and big houses and the day gamer is bypassing all that he's going straight to the source stopping that hot girl on the street even if she's got a boyfriend or a husband taking her number taking her for a date and maybe if he's doing day game in lover mode just being that uh, adventure sex, alpha sex guy, having sex with her and nobody else needs to know. So in that sense, both the girl and the guy win and they're hustling against what society is telling them to do. So you can choose, choose either view of the hustle in terms of day game. Sometimes it's win-win for you and the girl. She might be having sex on the side or it can be win-lose in that you're getting sex from these girls and then never seeing them again. So she's left feeling a bit bitter. Anyway, why I think day game is a hustle technically is that it follows a system. We call it the London day game model. And in any other type of hustle, there is a system. For example, in a classic con artist hustle, the sequence goes like this and see if you can uh, compare it to day game. The first thing, the hustler does is the setup all right so in day game you'd call that the approach the open the stop the compliment whatever the second thing the hustler does is to bait the hook all right so again in day game in the london day game model that is the stacking and the vibing the teasing and the challenging the third thing the hustler does in hustle terminology is called playing them down the wire that comes from an old telephone hustle in a bar to do with gambling um, and delayed transmission. In day game, you'd call that getting them to invest. Yeah, dialing down, getting them to do the work. And the finale of the hustle is the sting. That's why that movie is called The Sting. And in day game, we call it the close. The number close, perhaps uh, a kiss close further down the line or even the full F close. Yeah. Now, a hustle follows these very distinct stages whether you're playing pool or it's a specific con or you're hustling uh whatever this is tried and tested this is practiced and a good example of this is a great documentary i saw involving a stage pickpocket from las vegas who picks the audience's pockets for fun and he went to naples in italy to try to find real pickpockets because it's one of his fascinations that this guy barbano travels around the world um, looking for real pickpockets because he wants to study their techniques. He's not judging them. He finds them fascinating. And this documentary I've linked below, I watched this thing and I thought, wow, this is just like day game. Because in Naples, there's men who've grown up a bit like Oliver Twist and Fagan with this art and craft of pickpocketing. And they don't pickpocket locals or uh, elderly people or disabled people people of their own they pickpocket tourists 
who are going to Vesuvius or whatever. There's obviously other pickpockets uh, or big concentrations of pickpockets in places like Rome and Barcelona. But Naples, they say, has the most professional. And Bob Arno set up lots of situations where he could kind of honey trap these guys. And remarkably, he finds them. He even finds the leader. And even more remarkably, they agree to be interviewed by him and the camera crew. And you see the camaraderie, you see uh, the hierarchy, you see the guys that teach the other guys, you see the guys that have given up. But most importantly, you see their technique and they perform different routines and they show him how they work as a group. They show him how their hustles work. Uh, he shows them a few of his little Vegas tricks. Uh, it's just fascinating, not because it endorses crime or pickpocketing, but just that it is a skill set. There's nothing natural about this. They're not just being themselves. Um, this, this, this is not natural pickpocketing. This is a deeply learnt, deeply practised, deeply technical. And this is why I find this fascinating, just like the street magic. When I was walking around Covent Garden beginning my day game, five years ago, more now, every day I would watch the same street magician who stands and performs on a corner of Covent Garden called Surprise Surprise Magician's Corner. It's a guy, if you know Covent Garden, this guy's a little bit tubby. He has a beard. Uh, he does the trick with the cups and balls and the finale is under his hat he produces a watermelon uh, but his technique is fantastic and for years and years and years i've watched him do it but what's cool about him like the street pickpockets is that he follows the sequence he follows a hustle sequence of the setup the baiting the hook playing them down the wire and then the sting the setup is that he does tricks for children using balloons that draws the crowd baiting the hook he does some kind of flashy tricks um, playing them on the wire, he gets the audience to move closer and he gets them to invest in different ways by um, stacking and having lots of open loops and promising this finale. The patter is all down. He says the same thing every single time. The jokes are the same every single time. He's got to come back for every single uh, neg or interruption people throw at him. He's very good at street improv, bringing people outside into the trick. And then the sting is obviously the finale and getting people's money because that's his job. And again, he's perfect at getting people to pay and um, embarrassing people if they walk off without paying. I'll try and video this guy one day. And I've even chatted to him. This was about four years ago when I was slightly uncalibrated. I, I went up and I said, oh, hey, man, do you do day game? Do you know what the game is? And surprisingly, he said, yes. He had read the game. He used to do pick up in bars, I guess, inspired by mystery and mystery's magic. But now I think he's married, but he's aware of the hustle. And that brings us back to the one and only mystery, co-author of the mystery method and a famous Los Angeles pickup artist because of Neil Strauss's book, The Game. A mystery before he was a pickup artist was obviously a magician a close-up magician in bars and clubs. That's why he brought magic into his pickup. People misunderstand mystery on many levels, but they think that he was endorsing fakery, trickery and magic when they forget that he was, he is a magician, you know, working with people like David Copperfield. And mystery was fascinated by how social dynamics um, can be manipulated, how social dynamics can be used to your advantage if you understand it and how it can be a hustle why a nightclub is a hustle and how you can out hustle other hustlers so the mystery method was the first time really on paper somebody had defined the hustle for meeting women in bars obviously day games come a long way and it does things slightly differently but it's still that hustle the m3 model of attraction comfort seduction all right, so don't go dissing mystery. I've made a video on that. So if you're looking for commonalities between street magic and day game and those charity sign up people that try and get your credit card details by stopping you in the street or by any kind of sales, really, from buying a car to walking into a TV showroom or um, bartering with somebody in a market, the same skills, the same techniques are often applied. And I talk about this in badass buddha when i'm going over the book 
uh, Principles of Persuasion by Professor Robert Cialdini. I also talk about this in my new product, Flomad, and how his Principles of Persuasion, which he picked up uh, whilst working as a car salesman, despite being a professor, he went undercover to be a car salesman and learn these persuasion techniques. How you see them in day game and night game and street magic, etc., etc. Some obvious ones are things like misdirection. So a close-up magician will always misdirect. And a day gamer, when he's fractionating properly, he'll also misdirect. Or a good example of this in day game on the street is when you say to a kill, yeah, after a minute of chatting, you say, oh, just move over here a second. Someone's trying to get past or watch out a bus is coming or, oh, it's just drizzling. Just step under here. We call that in day game the mini bounce, which is a test of compliance. Uh, it's the beginning of the compliance ladder. You could say an in instant date with, hey, I've just got 10 minutes for a coffee. Let's just go and sit over here. All that kind of stuff is testing for compliance using a little bit of misdirection. And the spike comfort, spike comfort, spike comfort fractionation thing allows you to get away with more. It allows you to escalate faster. That's another form really of misdirection. As Bob Arno says, I think somewhere he goes, attention is what steers your perception. Yeah, and that controls your reality. So if you can change somebody's attention, then uh, you can change their perception of an event. That's why hustlers are studying human behavior in very unorthodox ways, because whereas some people do it academically, uh, psychologists, sociologists, neuroscientists, the hustler is learning from experience, whether you're a pool shark or you're hustling in a casino or you're pickpocketing, or you're doing street magic, or you're doing day game, you're learning social dynamics live in situ. And for a day gamer, you start to pick up on lots of patterns, um, repeated behaviors. Like I said in my street improv video, you learn timings of the day and the flows of people, how girls respond in different situations on different streets at different times of the day, even in different countries, how different ages of girls respond, how different nationalities respond. You get a sixth sense as your social intelligence and calibration improves. So you can kind of predict the next move of the girl one step ahead of her it's a bit like chess you know what she's going to say you know what shit test she's going to throw at you you know what's going to happen and this is why we can look for things like the hook point this is why we know what attraction looks like this is why we know what a same day girl looks like this is why we know what an ovulating girl looks like this is why a good day day gamer will know when to go for the number know when to invite her out on text know when to go for the bounce know when to go for the kiss know when to escalate, know when to not escalate, know what token resistance is, etc, etc, etc. To someone who's never done this, this would look like magic. But to another experienced day gamer, it's like a magician watching another magician. Now the cool thing with day game is even when you know how the magic trick works, um, it can still blow your mind when you see somebody else do it well. So when I watch another good day gamer, who's using a different style, perhaps a different form of the hustle to me. Or I watch a night gamer, you know, somebody with a completely different hustle to me with girls. I just say, wow, that is impressive. I admire the art and craft of it. The thousands of hours that have gone into that. Yeah. Um, it's the geeky side of me. It's, it's lifting the curtain. It's, it's peeking behind the theater uh, scenery. That's what I find fascinating. And that's why when I read the game just after 2005, that's really what gripped my attention. Uh, not this thing that you were going to con girls into giving you their number or sleeping with you. Just that it was the suspension of disbelief. Women want to be seduced by alpha guys. Yeah. Feminine women like masculine men. So like people turning up for this magic show and watching the show and then giving money. That's the closest analogy I can think of to day game where the girl gets swept up in all of this. Even on the street, she might know you're a bit of a Casanova. She knows that she's going to give you her number and she knows that if she comes out on a date that it might well lead to sex. She goes along with the hustle and she enjoys it. Yep, she might feel bitter and angry if you leave her completely high and dry and you've promised her the earth and that you'll be her boyfriend. 
and then you really do do a runner, that's more like the pool shark. But I'm not one to stand here and lecture and preach and moralize about the ethics of Day Game as a hustle, because if you've read my first book, Day Game, there's over a hundred lay reports in there, and many of them right at the beginning were, you could say, quote unquote, unethical, if you're coming from a Christian standpoint. Because they had boyfriends, they were married, or it was pump and dump, or perhaps I was pretending to be the boyfriend, because that's the early form of the model, really, when you have to go on two, three, four dates. Uh, or girls would catch me with other girls, and I hadn't told them that it was an open relationship, etc., etc. But now I try to keep things a lot more uh, above board, you could say, and let girls know what I'm doing. But this is why it makes me laugh when people say uh, day game or seduction should be um, natural. It should be simple. It should be you being yourself. It should be uh, totally transparent. It should be easy and effortless. I see the Nirvana state that guys are trying to get to. I see this um, idealized halcyon idea of pickup being pure, especially after the RSD shitstorm a while ago when pickup got a very bad press and obviously the press loved it. They jumped on board this thing of pickup being dark and creepy and manipulative. Obviously the feminists love that too, uh, but let's not go down that negative road. What was I saying? Yeah. So a lot of people even dropped the word pickup and pickup terminology and they wanted to seem pure and above it and beyond game. But <laughs> it makes me laugh because the definition of game the definition of life and survival is this chess analogy, all right? It's tit for tat, it's cat and mouse. Uh, that's how genetics and evolution works. And dating and mating, that is cat and mouse. That is um, a game where you could say there are winners and losers, yeah? Whether that's the woman or other guys or society. Um, it follows a predictable pattern. It follows predictable moves. It's a skill set. You can learn it. You can get better at it. There's techniques. There's different techniques for different situations. And to deny all that goes on and just to think, well, you know, girls and guys just get together in a beautiful flowery meadow full of hearts and balloons. And it's all just wonderful and pure. That's just very naive. And I would say that that's just new age bullshit and possibly new age bullshit marketing. OK, because. What we're doing, stopping girls on the street and trying to get them into bed, that's a very calculated thing to do, all right? Whether you like it or not, I hope that's a part of your day game. You're seeing a young hot girl and you're thinking, I would like to have sex with her. And she might say, I have a boyfriend or I'm married. Uh, she might be a maybe girl, so therefore you have to do the attraction work. You have to get her to hook and invest. You have to do the correct texting and then you have to do the correct dating. You have to know what to do when she's back in your house. That's all very calculated. So this whole thing about trying to make uh, pick up pure is quite laughable, really. That's like a magician saying, come and see my show. There will be no tricks and it will all just be peace and love and hugging. You know, I will not trick you because that is wrong. Or another analogy I give is um, imagine any company in the world not doing any sales or marketing. So even if it was BMW uh, and they don't have to hustle hard in the form of, uh, you know, whatever, Ikea or Tesco's because BMW is one of those products that yeah, they can afford to be choosy and customers come to them and the brand name's strong, etc., etc. But they still have to have showrooms. They still have to sell their car. They still have to persuade their clients with uh, perhaps a free coffee or a glass of champagne or a test drive, etc., etc. That's the definition of the free market economy, you know. In any kind of sales where people have a choice, then there's going to be a hustle. So let's not all get all high and mighty and holier than thou when it comes to this. I'm not judging anybody. Once again, I'm saying respect the hustle, respect all the different forms of the hustle because day gamers sometimes like to think of themselves as better than night gamers or night gamers this day game. Um, it's very easy for gamers to diss rock stars or people playing the celebrity hustle. Some guys are using the dance floor hustle some guys are hustling by being promoters. Some guys are hustling because they're musicians. Some guys are hustling in hostels. Some guys are doing internet hustling or Tinder hustling. 
using their looks, whatever. It's all the same form of the hustle. You're trying to channel your SMV and hustle for a girl who's younger and hotter. I hope that makes sense. It started off as a very concrete idea, this street hustle thing. Um, but in my mind, it makes sense. And I like the analogy between those hustle films and magic and uh, street art, street theater, day game. Oh, one last thing I wanted to say about an analogy, and that's this charity sign-up model. You must be aware, especially if you live in Europe, of people with clipboards stopping you very needily and weakly during the day and trying to do some kind of day game on you to get your credit card details to sign up for saving tigers or the British Red Cross, whatever. Now, once I dated and slept with a girl who was one of these charity sign-up people, it was at the beginning of my day game career and she tried to stop me in a shopping centre and just as she was about to open her mouth and do her spiel, I did my spiel on her. Uh, it was a little bit indirect, I think. This was before I was doing full direct day game and I asked her about her shoes. Anyway, we got into a conversation. She was Lithuanian and uh, eventually I slept with her and told her what I did. And she was fascinated by the London day game model because she had been taught the chugger, that's what we call the charity sign up person, charity mugger. She had been taught that model, which was very similar to the hustle model I told you about, which is obviously very similar to the London day game model. So all our models were kind of the same in that those charity sign up people have to approach and stop and then they have to do kind of some form of attraction, baiting the hook, uh, a bit of bamboozling, certain type of questioning. They're, they're told all about their form of hook point and when to recognize that, then to go into rapport, find commonalities, sell on a high, that's their sting. Um, so they've got a set pattern and she was even training other people who worked for that company. So if you're a charity sign up person, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on how it links to street hustling in terms of day game leave your comments below if you're a close-up magician leave your comments below i'd like to know about your hustle model if you're a naughty boy and you really hustle on the dark side like you're a pickpocket or you're a pool shark or you've got you know the three card monty down or you do that kind of romanian dodgy cups and balls thing which is street magic really crossed over to the dark side if you do that and you're aware of how day game links to the other forms of hustling real hustles then i would be fascinated to know this because it's something i'm working on it's a project that's going on in the background but anyway i'll leave it there for today a bit of an abstract po podcast but i hope uh, it made sense on some level anyway speak to you next week ta -da.